Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to show to you how to derive the moments for normal distribution. The probability density function or PDF for normal distribution is shown in here. The range of values of its random variable and its parameters are also shown in here. Now for the moments that we are deriving, it is expressed as this expectation of x minus mu raised to n. So to derive the explicit formula for our moments, we need to evaluate this for normal distribution. So to begin, we know that expectation of x minus mu raised to n is equal to integral of x minus mu raised to n, which is from here, in here, times the probability density function, which is this. We have here e raised to x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared dx. The range of values of our random variable is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we have here negative infinity to positive infinity. Now this integral expression is hard to integrate because of the existence of negative mu in here. So now let us transform this integral expression into another form that we can easily integrate. Let us use the transformation function z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. Then from here, x minus mu is sigma times z. Then from here, x is equal to sigma z plus mu. When we put this mu to the right, then dx will be the derivative of this. Note that the sigma and mu are the parameters for normal distribution, thus they are constants. So the derivative of x will be equal to sigma dz. Then let us substitute this in here. So we have our moments will be equal to integral of for x minus mu we have sigma z then raised to n we have sigma raised to n z raised to n then we have this then we have here e raised to negative then for x minus mu again we have sigma z then raised to 2 we have sigma squared z squared then over 2 sigma squared then for the x, we have this sigma dz. Now for the limits of our integral, when x is a negative infinity, in here z will be negative infinity minus a constant is still negative infinity, then divide by constant which is always greater than zero is still negative infinity. So we have here negative infinity. Then when x is positive infinity, in here, we have here positive infinity minus constant. This is still positive infinity and divided by constant, which is always greater than zero. This is still positive infinity. So we have here positive infinity. Then let us cancel out sigma squared over sigma squared and sigma over sigma. Then let us move the constants from here outside of this integral. So we have sigma raised to n over square root of 2 pi then the remaining terms are z raised to n e raised to negative z squared over 2 then we have here dz from negative infinity to positive infinity from here now let us evaluate this integral expression. Let us use the integration by parts. Remember from calculus that we have the formula for integration by parts. Integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. So what we're going to do is to make this term in here, this integral expression in here, to be same with this by assigning u and v from here. Now let us assign dv to be equal to a term with this exponential term. 
then we have here dz. We need the term in here. Remember from calculus that the derivative of e raised to s, let us use the variable s, is equal to e raised to s ds. Then if we let s to be this term negative z squared over 2, then we have derivative of e raised to negative z squared over 2 becomes e raised to s which is e raised to negative z squared over 2 then ds which is the derivative of this. So we have here negative 2z over 2. So we have negative 2z over 2. Then we have dz. Then we can cancel out this 2 in here and 2 in here. Then this one will become negative z e raised to negative z squared over 2. Now let us put this in here. Then the integral of this which is v is equal to the integral of this which is this. So we have e raised to negative z squared over 2. Then for letting dv to be this, we need to determine u such that if we multiply it with this dv becomes this. Observe that we have already the exponential term same with this and this in here, this in here. But in here we have z raised to n and in here we have negative z. So if we let this u to be negative z raised to n minus 1, then multiplying it with this becomes negative, negative becomes positive. Then z raised to n minus 1 plus 1 is z raised to n, which is same with this. Then this term is same with this. So now this integral of u dv using u this and dv this is same with this and then the value of this integral expression will be this. So we have integral of z raised to n e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz from negative infinity to positive infinity which is from here is equal to uv minus integral of v du. So uv is this times this negative z raised to n minus 1 e raised to negative z squared over 2 then minus integral of v du. So we have here integral of v which is this times du which is the derivative of this. So we have from here du is negative of n minus 1 z raised to n minus 1 minus 1 is n minus 2. Then we have dz. So putting this in here, we have negative of n minus 1, which is same with negative 1 times n minus 1. Then z raised to n minus 2 dz. Then this is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we have here negative infinity to positive infinity. Then this also has to be evaluated from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then, let us evaluate this. We can express this as negative z raised to n minus 1 over e raised to z squared over 2. Note that we remove the negative in here but put this whole expression to the denominator. Then now, let us evaluate it from negative infinity to positive infinity. If we substitute this positive infinity for z in here, and z in here for the numerator, this will become positive infinity raised to n minus 1, which is positive infinity. Then we have here negative, so it becomes negative infinity. Then if we substitute this positive infinity for z in here, we get positive infinity squared, which is positive infinity, then over 2, which is still positive infinity. Then e raised to positive infinity is still positive infinity. So we have here negative infinity over infinity. Now observe that this z in here is at the exponent of e while this one z in here is just raised to n minus 1. When z increases, the value in here increases a lot faster compared to the magnitude in here which is the absolute value of this. And when z approaches positive infinity, 
this term will become very very large compared to this then this whole term will approach zero so we have here zero then minus if we substitute this negative infinity for z in here and also z in here this term will become negative infinity raised to n minus 1 which is either positive or negative infinity depending whether this n is odd or even and in this denominator negative infinity squared is positive infinity and positive infinity over 2 is still positive infinity and e raised to positive infinity is positive infinity so this will become positive or negative infinity over infinity now again when z increases this denominator will increase a lot faster compared to this numerator because this z in here is at the exponent of e while this one is z raised to a constant exponent then this whole term will approach zero when z approaches negative infinity so we have here zero then zero minus zero is zero so we have here zero now if you are doubtful with the analysis that i have just done or you want a formal proof you can use the l hospitas rule i will write here l hospitas rule and apply it n minus 1 times in here by doing that this numerator will become a constant and this denominator will become a polynomial of z times e raised to z squared over 2 which when we evaluate it as z approaches plus infinity or negative infinity this denominator will become infinity so this whole term will be approach 0 when we apply the l hospitas rule n minus 1 times in here then evaluate it from negative infinity to positive infinity so now we have here zero then for this integral expression we can cancel out this negative in here and this negative one here then we can move this constant n minus one outside of this integral expression so let's do that equal to n minus one times integral of let us write this z raised to n minus 2 first then this e raised to negative z squared over 2 then we have dz then this is from negative infinity to positive infinity now observe that this integral expression here is similar to this integral expression except that this is n while this one is n minus 2 so since they are just constants if we evaluate this integral expression it will become like this but this n in here and n in here will become n minus 2 so let's do that so we have here n minus 1 then evaluating this integral expression we have this n becomes n minus 2 so we have n minus 2 minus 1 which is n minus 3 then integral of z raised to n minus 2 minus 2 is n minus 4 then e raised to negative z squared over 2 times dz from negative infinity to positive infinity then do it again this n became n minus 4 so we can put n in here to be n minus 4 and also in here becomes n minus 4 so we have equal to n minus 1 times n minus 3 then this one is this one but n becomes n minus 4 which is equal to this so we have to change this n and n in here by n minus 4 so we have here n minus 5 then integral of z raised to n minus 4 minus 2 is n minus 6 e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz from negative infinity to positive infinity now we can do it again and again this n minus 6 will go down and down n minus 8 n minus 10 until we exhaust it so now we can put a terminating point in here let us put it as p so we can have here n minus 1 times n minus 3 times n minus 5 etc and we have here integral of z raised to let us put p to be 
determinating point in here. When we evaluate this again and again, e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz. Now, what is the terminating point for this series in here? Observe that when this n minus 6, the terminating point in here is n minus 5. When in here this is n minus 4, the terminating point is n minus 3. So we can say that the terminating point in here is equal to this plus 1. Because n minus 6 plus 1 is n minus 5. This one is n minus 4 plus 1 is n minus 3. And also this one, n minus 2 plus 1 is n minus 1. So we have here, terminating at p plus 1. So now this is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So now what should be our terminating point? P should be the something that could make this whole integral expression be easily integrated. If this P is 0, then we're left with integral of e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz, which can be integrated using the similar form to the Gaussian integral. We can transform it to become a Gaussian integral that we can easily integrate, which I will show you a little later. And also we can terminate this P to be 1. So this one will become z times e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz, where this integral is to be compared to this, to be this negative of this, because that term is just this term without the negative sign here. So the integral will be negative of e raised to negative z squared over 2. So it is okay to terminate this p to be 0 or 1, or this one to be terminated at 0 plus 1 is 1 or 1 plus 1 is 2. But observe that this is a series where we reduce each term by 2. Each term in here is the preceding term minus 2. So now if n is odd, then this one will become even. Let's say if n is 11, then this one will become 10, which is even. Then minus 2 is 8, 4, 2. We can term it at 2 or 0. But what we want is p to become either 0 or 1. So we can terminate it at 2, which is for even. So we can, so we can let this p plus 1 to be equal to 2. So that p will become 2 minus 1 or 1. So we have here 0 is 1 and we can easily integrate this. Now if n is even, then these are odd. Because for example, n is 10 which is even, then 10 minus 1 is 9. Then this one will become 7, this one will become 5. So we have a 9, 7, 5, 3 until 1. And if p plus 1 is 1, then p will become 0, which is okay for this. So we have let p plus 1 is equal to 1. So that p equals to 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. And 0 is to 0 is 1, and we can easily integrate this. So now let us derive it case by case. Let's say if n is odd, so we have let p equals to 2 minus 1 or 1. Then let us evaluate this integral expression, integral of z raised to 1, e raised to negative z squared over 2, dz, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then for this expression, from above, we have this. So, integral of this one without the negative sign, z times e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz is negative e raised to negative z squared over 2. So we have here negative e raised to negative z squared over 2, which has to be evaluated from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now this one can be expressed as negative 1 over e raised to z squared over 2. And if we substitute this positive infinity for z in here, we get positive infinity squared is positive infinity, then over 2 is still positive infinity. Then e raised to positive infinity is still positive infinity, so we have here negative 1 over positive infinity or 0. So we have here 0, then minus 
if we substitute this negative infinity for z in here, this one negative infinity squared will become positive infinity, then over 2 is still positive infinity. And e raised to positive infinity is still positive infinity, so we have here negative 1 over positive infinity, which is 0. So we have here 0. So the value of this will become 0 when n is odd. Then, then this whole term will become 0 when n is odd. So this term will become 0 when n is odd. Then, our moments, which is this constant times this integral expression, same with this one, which is equal to 0, then our moments will become 0. So we have now, when n is odd, moments is equal to 0. Now, let us evaluate when n is even. So if n is even, let p plus 1 equals 1 or p is equal to 0. So let us evaluate the integral of z raised to 0 e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz. So we have from above integral of e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz from negative infinity to positive infinity. So as I just mentioned, we're gonna use the Gaussian integral. Remember that the Gaussian integral, which is the formula integral of e raised to negative, let us use the variable y, y squared dy from negative infinity to positive infinity is equal to square root of pi. So this is Gaussian integral. Now, if you want a proof for this one, I have a video for this proof and I put the link in the description below. Now, observe that this is y squared while this one is z squared over 2. So, let us transform this to be similar to this. Using the transformation function, let us use z is equal to square root of 2y. Then, I will show you that using this in here, it will become similar to this. So this one will become integral of e raised to negative square of z which is square of this one. So we have here 2y squared then over 2. This in here will be the derivative of this which is equal to square root of 2 dy. So we can put here square root of 2 dy for dz. Then for the limits of the integral the y in here will become y is equal to z over square root of 2. Then, when z is negative infinity, in here we have negative infinity over square root of 2, which is negative infinity, so we have here negative infinity. And when z is positive infinity, in here we have positive infinity over square root of 2, which is positive infinity, so we have here positive infinity. And then let us cancel out this 2 in here over 2. Then let us move this constant square root of 2 outside of this integral expression. Then this term will be, let me put it in here, square root of 2 times integral of e raised to negative y squared then dy. Then from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we have here negative infinity to positive infinity. Then this term in here is same with this one, which has a value of square root of pi. So we have here square root of pi. Then this will be square root of 2 times square root of pi or square root of 2 pi. So now we have this as a square root of 2 pi. So for this, this will be square root of 2 pi when n is even. 
and also p is equal to we put here zero so we have zero in here then let us evaluate this when p is zero so it will terminate at one so let me use another clean sheet so we have here n minus one times n minus three times n minus five until it is equal to one because in here we put p is equal to zero or zero plus one is one then let us evaluate it let us transform this using another variable let us have n is equal to w plus one then let us substitute this in here so then we have here w plus one minus one is w w plus one minus three is w minus two then w plus one minus five is w minus four etc until it becomes one now let k to be the number of terms in here now let us divide by two for each term in here but first we need to assign a letter for this expression now let us divide by two for each term in here we have a over since we assign here k to be the number of terms in here then we have here over 2 raised to k is equal to w over 2 times w minus 2 over 2 times w minus 4 over 2 etc until it becomes 1 over 2 it is equal to we have here w over 2 then this one will become w over 2 minus 2 over 2 is 1 then w over 2 minus 4 over 2 is 2 etc until 1 over 2 so now observe that this term in here is reduced by 1 from here and then this term is from here reduced by 1 until it becomes 1 half now it is not nice to use the factorial notation because we are terminating here at 1 half the best thing is to use the gamma function remember the identity for gamma function gamma of alpha is equal to alpha minus 1 times gamma of alpha minus 1 and if we apply again this identity for gamma of alpha minus 1 this one will become alpha minus 1 times for gamma of alpha minus 1 we have to make this alpha to be alpha minus 1 and also this one to become alpha minus 1 so we have here alpha minus 2 times gamma of alpha minus 2 and it will go in and on so we have here alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2 times alpha minus 3 etc until some terminating point let us put that terminating point to be q and also as you can observe this term in here is same with this one inside the gamma function so we have here gamma of q now observe that this will be same with this if we let this alpha minus 1 to be equal to w over 2 and q to be 1 half so let us do that let alpha minus 1 to be equal to this w over 2 then this alpha will be w over 2 plus 1 then this gamma of alpha which is now gamma of w over 2 plus 1 is equal to this one which is equal to w over 2 then times this one is from here minus 1 so we have here w over 2 minus 1 then again w over 2 minus 2 etc until we have q which is we let here q equal to 1 half so terminated at q which is 1 half 
Then we have here gamma of 1 half. Then this term is same with this one, which is equal to a over 2 raised to k. So we have here a over 2 raised to k. Then this a will be 2 raised to k times this. over this gamma of 1 half. Now you can find from several references that gamma of 1 half is equal to square root of pi. So you can check out for gamma function and check out the gamma of 1 half. You can see that it is equal to square root of pi. Then now let us again bring back the n from w. So from here w is n minus 1. So let us put there. So we have here 2 raised to k gamma of n minus 1 over 2 plus 1. Then we have here over square root of pi. Then this term will be n over 2 minus 1 half plus 1 equal to negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. So we have here n over 2 plus 1 half or equal to n plus 1 over 2. So we have here 2 raised to k over square root of pi gamma of n plus 1 over 2. Now let us determine the value of k which is the number of terms in here. So let me rewrite that a. n minus 1, n minus 3, n minus 5 until 1 has k terms as defined. Now let me add 1 from each term in here. We will have here n plus 1 minus 1 is n. Then we have here n plus 1 minus 3 is n minus 2. Then in here n plus 1 minus 5 is n minus 4, etc. until 1 plus 1 is 2. Then now, since they are 1 to 1, then it has k terms. So let us multiply all of them. Now, if we multiply this with this, we will have k plus k terms. So we have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 times n minus 5 etc. until 2 times 1 which has k plus k terms. Now observe that this is n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 until 2, 1 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 until n. So this has n terms. So n is equal to k plus k. Then n is equal to 2k or k is equal to n over 2. So now this k in here will become n over 2. So now let us use now this for our integral before. Remember that our a is this one. Let me show you. We assign a to be this. So this is equal to this. Then we need to multiply it by square root of 2 pi to get the value of this integral expression. So let me copy this integral expression. So this one will be equal to our a which is this. So we have 2 raised to n over 2 over square root of pi and we have this gamma of n plus 1 over 2. Then remember that we have to multiply it by square root of 2 pi. 
So we have here square top to pi. Then we can cancel out this pi in here and this square top pi in here. Now let us now use this one for our moments. Remember that our moments is equal to this constant times this integral expression which is this one that we just copied. So let me copy this term. So we have here moments is equal to the constant in there times this integral expression. So we have 2 raised to n over 2 gamma of n plus 1 over 2 then square root of 2. Then we can cancel out this square root of 2 and 2 in here. Then let us bring back this square root of pi to be gamma of 1 over 2. So we have now equal to sigma raised to n times 2 raised to n over 2 then gamma of n plus 1 over 2 over gamma of 1 half. So now we have our moments for the normal distribution. So this is when n is even. Otherwise, moment is equal to 0. So now that's our moment for the normal distribution. So now let us verify that using the moments we can verify the mean and variance from here. Let me copy this. Let us use another sheet. So we have here our moments. Now for the variance, we know that variance can be expressed as expectation of x minus expectation of x. We have here squared. And we know that expectation of x is equal to mean. And for normal distribution, it is equal to mu. So we can put here mu. Then it is equal to expectation of x minus mu raised to 2. And this moment can be expressed as expectation of x minus mu raised to n. When n is equal to 2, this one should be equal to our variance. We know that the variance for normal distribution is sigma squared. Let us verify that. So expectation of x minus mu squared that is making n to be 2 will be sigma raised to 2 times 2 raised to 2 over 2 then gamma of 2 plus 1 over 2 then over gamma of 1 half. So this will be equal to 2 over 2 is 1 plus 1 over 2. Now from our identity, gamma of alpha is equal to alpha minus 1, gamma of alpha minus 1, then gamma of 1 plus 1 over 2 is equal to alpha minus 1 which is this term minus 1 which is just 1 half. Then again, gamma of this alpha minus 1, which is this term minus 1, which is again 1 half. And we can substitute this in here. So we have sigma squared. So 2 over 2 is 1. We can cancel out. So just times 2 times 1 half gamma of 1 half. Then over gamma of 1 half. Then we can cancel out this gamma of 1 half over gamma of 1 half then 2 over 2. So we have here sigma squared. Remember that we use this formula because n is even. Otherwise, if it is odd, then it should be equal to 0. Now for our mean, our mean is equal to expectation of x. Let us verify it from that. Take note that expectation of x minus mu is equal to 
since this is a linear and mu is just a constant. So we have here expectation of x minus expectation of mu which is just mu. Then for our formula of our moment, it is expectation of x minus mu raised to 1. So n is equal to 1. And from here, when n is equal to 1 or n is odd, this moment is equal to 0. So this one will become equal to 0. Then expectation of x will be this mu to the right becomes mu. So we have now our mu for our mean which is correct for the normal distribution. So we have verified that using our formula for moments for the derivation of variance and mean for normal distribution leads to correct results. So this ends this video for the derivation of moments for normal distribution. I hope you enjoy this video and the next video as well. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe in my channel.